Greetings, Astro students. Here's a tutorial for the final Skylabs images that you are going to create. Um, these are animations taking your individual star trail frames, the 30 second, or not 30 second, the 60 second exposures you took using the Nightcap app on your phone, and you're going to animate them two different ways. One shows the sky going by, and the other shows the stars streaking by. In order to do this, you may have pre-processed all your images in Adobe Lightroom. So this is the folder of all of my images um, from November 19th. So this I had set up my iPod camera sitting on a tripod, and it was it was it went all night. And I'm not going to take all of these images. I'm just going to take some of them. You can see that there are 900 something images in this folder. Too many for the purposes of this video. Um, so I'm just going to take some of them and I will check, I will click on one of the, the first ones. Um, everyone again is only, uh, these actually happen to be 30 second exposures, not 60 second exposures. Um, hopefully you have 60 second exposures. And I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to check Press shift, check the first one, and then check one a uh, few uh, rows down just to give a sampling of everything here. So again, selecting some of these, not all of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them actually into the Star Stacks app. So dropping these into the Star Stacks app. I get all of the, the frames, again my 30 second, not 60 second, hopefully you have 60 second, and the key uh, box to check is save after each step, the cumulative image saving. So it's going to take all of these, and after each stacking it's going to output an individual image into my specified output folder. I am going to create a new folder. Um, I don't want to have these all in the same folder with my original images. It just makes it easier to, to sort it around. So I'm going to create a folder uh, just called Star Stacks Process. Again, just labeling stuff descriptively so when you get lots of files, you know what you're looking at. Again, sorting your stuff and keeping it organized. Uh, so creating a new folder, calling it Star Stacks Process, and this just lets me know that these are the cumulatively saved images uh, for a star trail and it was saved at every step along the way. So it's processing this for some reason. Um, hopefully it'll stop spinning. I'm using PowerPoint actually to create a screen capture here. Uh, there we go. Select the folder and there we go. So all of this uh, is set. I'm going to use all the default settings. It's going to, there's my, my folder that I created. Um, and it's going to stack all of these images as star trails and output a, an image every step of the way. So all those settings, I'm going to use all the default settings, um, all the background uh, and compression, all of that. You can play around with these to see uh, what kind of results you get. I'm just going with the default. So I'll press Start Processing and they process incrementally and at every step of the way they're saving each of the stacked image sets. So it'll save the first two, then the second three stacked, then the next four stacked, and so on and so forth, um, giving me every one of these intermediate images. And the reason I want to save all these is I want to be able to animate this. I can see uh, the belt of Orion streaking out. It's always interesting that the colors come out uh, with more detail uh, when they become trails. I find that fascinating. Um, but it's uh, pretty cool to see that there is indeed the celestial equator going diagonally through this and that the curvature uh, increases at the corners of this image. So all of these are being stacked. Um, we are almost done. There's Betelgeuse uh, rising out very clearly in Orange Star. Uh, one, of a, one of a few close supernova candidates. Uh, it could go, it could have already gone. 
uh, the clouds are coming in but they're not interfering with my image um, this is uh, again to give us the individual frames for the trailing animation and there again um, color becomes very apparent even through the clouds which is which is nice it's still amazing that this stuff is done with the smartphone so there's the celestial equator uh, region there's that curvature moving away from the celestial equator and the curvature on the other side so we are looking uh, where the two halves of the celestial sphere come together there we go 104 images this is giving me roughly an hour of um, time because I have 30 second uh, images so about actually 52 minutes is what that would be um, and I can close star stacks I don't need that I have all of those in my star stacks process folder so they're all in a folder by themselves I can open it up and I can double check it's always good to double check at every point along the way what we have going on so I can just click through and see yep those are indeed streaking along doing a manual form of the animation now I open Photoshop and in Photoshop what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file and scripts and load files into stack so I'm going to browse for that folder there we go I'm going to select actually the not the star stacks process image but I'm going to select a chunk of my original images. I'm not going to select all of them because I had almost a thousand, but I'm just going to select the representative bunch for purposes of this video. You should have about two hours worth of exposure. Um, this might be less again, but I just want to be able to create a video without taxing my computer while doing a screen share. So I've selected, I think, enough uh, images here. I don't know exactly how many, but we're going to find out. I'm going to press OK and then it'll load the file list into this load layers window press OK again and it goes through this process of loading everything into layers in Photoshop and loading everything into these layers uh, takes a little while um, especially if you have a lot of images but you'll see that they are sequencing through and eventually um, you'll get all the layers loaded up. Again, Photoshop is this wonderful tool for doing layers-based photo editing. Um, you will get the tip of the iceberg of Photoshop in this class. We're going to learn uh, some of the layering tools, a little bit of the adjustment tools later this quarter, um, and how to blend images together. But for this, we're going to be using it to create an animation, so more so than just a photograph, uh, but a video. I like to think of a video as a three-dimensional images, two dimensions in space, you have a, a height and a width, and then a dimension in time. And so we're going to add that third dimension, but it's not a spatial dimension, it is a time dimension, a sequence of images. Should be all loaded. There we are. So now that I have all these layers loaded, these are all the images, I don't know exactly how many uh, that I've loaded up but we again we're going to find out and I'm going to go to a tool space window or a tool space that I'll open up and it will be the timeline so the timeline will allow us to put a layer and then more layers and create a frame animation kind of like a, the original uh, hand-drawn animations where you drew a picture then took a picture of it then you drew another picture and then you took a picture of it and you ran all those images at a certain frame rate and so frame animation uh, where we create a video frame by frame and so I press what I'll do is I'll press frame animation I'm actually gonna resize uh, my image so I can see the whole thing on the screen I want to be able to see my entire canvas uh, create the frame animation and then I'll click um, a few little menu bars the little menu bars right there and I'm going to make frames from the layers so it's going to add all the layers into a frame animation and this is actually going to let me see how many individual images that I actually put into there so 62 this represents 30 minutes 31 minutes of um, 
of sky moving. Notice it's going backwards when I let it sequence through. Um, that's again not exactly what's happening. It looks like Orion's setting in the the east. So we're going to go to that menu bar again. We're going to go to reverse frames, and then once I press play again, everything should start to move exactly how the camera actually observed it to move. And so again, every one of these frames is a 30 second exposure um, showing again the sky moving step by step frame by frame and it is kind of nice to see it the clouds come in this is how you make those any any kind of long exposure time lapse where your frames are actually each a long exposure so it's a this is a useful technique you can use it for a lot of stuff it's great for like shooting cars going down the street or people walking by busy intersections and create interesting things now I want to add or I want to create how long uh, each uh, frame will be presented so I got to pick my frame rate essentially so I'm gonna click on the first one and I need to think about how long I want each frame to present itself so after clicking on the first one I'll slide through to the end of the sequence I'll have press shift when I collect when I clicked on the first one um, and then once I get to the end of the sequence um, let's get to the end of that sequence going all the way to the end I'm making sure again that I actually press shift and I'm gonna pick point one seconds I want a tenth of a second for each frame movie frame rates are about 24 frames a second for cinema point one makes these frames go by pretty smoothly, not too jumpy, and um, not too fast. So it's kind of a happy medium for these kinds of time-lapse images. So I like the tenth of a frame, or tenth of a second per frame. And last thing I can do, I can do a brightness and contrast for all of this. Again, the brightness and contrast adjustment layer will affect all of the images, all the layers below it. So I don't have to do this frame by frame. I can just do this for everything. I'll also do a little levels adjustment. Again, you can look up what these actually do. I'm just trying to get the star detail nice and present. We're going to learn more about what levels do later this quarter. Um, if you know how to use these, go for it. If you don't want to try these, again, as long as your images are all uh, processed or visible then you should be fine you don't have to use these adjustments again these are all a matter of taste um, and again these adjust everything in the video not just one of the frames so super useful um, now that it's playing by I'm just gonna double check looks all good so now we're gonna export this and so we're gonna go up to export and render video now I want to look at the document size, the resolution. This is set from the last video I exported. I don't know what it was. The, the, the size looks like it's a cinema size, roughly a 16 by 9. Um, I'm going to change this. I'm going to go check actually back to my original um, image or my original uh, canvas what my document size actually was. Um, so let's cancel that for a second. Let's go up to canvas size. And in pixels, what we have, it's 3264 pixels by 2448. So that's roughly a 3 to 2 ratio. That actually is exactly a 3 to 2 ratio um, for pictures that are like your 6 inches by 4 inches uh, if you're printing them out um, for your standard 6 by 4 picture. So I'm going to take that resolution. I want to make sure that my video resolution will be something close to that. I'm not going to crop anything out in the video. I want to keep everything that's there. I don't want to get any uh, top or bottom cut off. So I'm going to go back to export, go to render video, and I'm going to put in the uh, this the resolution 3264 by 2448, and set the frame rate. Oh, that's right. Uh, that is the maximum uh, value that the height of this can be for the current um, compression codec. 
but I still want to have the 3 to 2 ratio. So I will go 3,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. So everything will be there, nothing's cropped out. It's just going to be downsampled a little bit, but the, the aspect ratio is still the same. So H264, that's the max resolution uh, of it, 3,000 um, by 2,000 pixels approximately. And then um, I'm going to set the document frame rate. Um, the frame rate that I set, 0.1 seconds per frame, uh, is already one of the, the standard options. So we can pick on 10, 10 frames per second, 0.1 second per frame. Um, again, standard cinema is 24 frames a second. You can put custom whatever you want. Um, but I found that this is uh, suitably smooth, not too slow, not too fast. And everything looks good. Um, oh, I got to change the file name. So the file name, I like to be, again, descriptive. I like to date stuff. Um, so I know when I did stuff, uh, what exactly I'm looking at. So this is Orion Celestial Equator. The date was 2020, 11, 19. I let the camera again go all night that night. And I'm going to call this a sky lapse uh, for sky time lapse. Again, it's not trailing. So I like the phrase sky lapse. You can call it whatever you want. Um, but this again represents the animation of the stars moving across the sky, not trailing across the sky. And I'm going to press, uh, looks all good. So I'll press render and it takes, depends on, you know, how much memory your computer has, how many frames you have, what's the resolution, all of that. Um, but this usually exports pretty quickly because there isn't too much that's going on in this other than the star is moving. So compression wise is actually compressed to pretty small. And there it is uh, playing. There is my video in VLC media player. And there is Orion drifting by along the celestial equator with clouds going by. So that's the first of the required videos uh, that you need to create with one of your um, nighttime imaging sessions uh, using the Nightcap app and getting a, a bunch of long exposure images of the sky. So the next one we're going to do, oh, I don't have to save any of this. Um, there's no reason to, it just saves it as very big files. Once you get the process of this and go through it a few times, you realize it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and so there's no reason to save the Photoshop file. So I'll just close this off um, and start a new file. So for our next required image, we're going to use the star stacks pre-processed image. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to scripts, load files into stack. And I'm going to look for that folder that I created, the star stacks process. This was a little bit more than my previous set. Um, but that's okay, I'll use all of them. Press OK. And then it loads the files into the file list. Takes a little bit because it's a little bit longer. Um, there we are. And so I can just check that. Yep, looks like all of them. And then I'm going to press OK. Um, I'm not going to do any of these checkboxes. I didn't mention that last time. No need to. Um, I don't want any alignment or any smart object creation going on. So after that, press OK. And again, just like last time, it's going to take a little bit to load all of these into the stack. Um, you can see the, the number is ticked by as it's going, but I'm going to use the magic of video editing to speed this up. And there we are. The file list is done. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a frame animation. So I press create frame animation. The first layer gets put in as the first frame. I go back to the menu bar and I press make frames from layers. And then it adds all the layers as frames. And just like last time, if I play it, it's going in reverse. So what we need to do is we need to go back to that menu bar set and press reverse frames. And then the star trails are going to proceed in the proper direction. And there we see everything streaking along, leaving trails in the sky. So the animation of the stars tracing out the lines of declination um, 
in our view of the celestial sphere. So same, I'm going to use the same settings for this. I'm going to treat this um, again as a tenth of a second per frame. I find again that it is smooth enough and not too slow, not too fast. So again, I press the first one, I press shift, I go all the way to the end, I press the last one, and I'm going to pick my delay as 0.1 seconds. And that is the uh, frame rate uh, for this frame animation. And that all looks good. And then I will do a little bit of contrast adjustment, um, brightness contrast. Again, you don't have to do this. Um, you can do this to taste. You can play around with the settings. You can look up what each one of these do. There is um, massive YouTube tutorials on all of these uh, tools in Photoshop. You can do noise reduction if you want, all of these things. Uh, we'll learn more about some of them later this quarter. But again, what I care about is just seeing that the stars are streaking across your video. It just needs to be clear to me that they are indeed streaking across. There should be some recognizable constellations um, in the field of view. So I'll do a little quick brightness adjustment just to make sure that nothing is washed out. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to export and render video. And all my settings from last time are still here. Photoshop uses always the preview, whatever you used previously. I'm going to save this again with the date. And I'm going to call this same thing, Orion Celestial Equator, but the different a uh, title I give this is trail lapse because it is a trail and a time lapse of a trail. So trail time lapse, trail time lapse, trail lapse. Um, same aspect ratio and resolution and 10 frames per second. So all of this looks great. And again, these settings I find work for this. You can play around with them and see, you know, if you try different frame rates, stuff like that. Use the encoder though, the H.264 encoder. Um, it exports stuff as mp4 files and it exports it in a certain kind of compression and I find that's a reliable and pretty universal form of uh, video compression. So it, again it's using Adobe Media Encoder to turn it into a certain format of making sure that the video is not a ridiculously large size. So that's all good and uh, I'm going to press render and it'll take twice as long as the previous one because there's roughly twice the images. This is about 104 images, meaning it is, uh, these are 30 seconds uh, each. So this is about 52 minutes of sky passing. Um, again, you need to have two hours of sky passing. So if you don't have that, you should get some this week. Uh, the weather is going to be cold and dry and clear for the foreseeable future. Uh, again, I'm not gonna save any changes to this. And there it is. There is the star streaking uh, trail lapse. And again, I can see more colors. The clouds are doing an interesting thing in this uh, because they, the clouds themselves are leaving uh, trails from where they appear. They're not just moving across the sky, but I can still see the stars through it. So again, I'm not worried about the clouds. I just wanna see um, the passage of the sky. And that's the whole point of this. So you can actually record and see the passage of the sky without having to sit out there for two hours looking up. We want to record and represent how the sky is changing um, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour. So again, this is a nice representation, a 3D representation, two in space, one in time, of what the sky does. Um, so Hopefully uh, this will make sense for you. You can go back and watch different parts of this and pause it. Um, this is a useful uh, method for showing stuff. And there is the, uh, the other um, Skylapse that was in there. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you create using this. You can use this for other kinds of animations as well. As I said, whether it's cars going down the freeway, um, sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset, um, it's, it's a useful technique in Photoshop to create an animation. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, take your star trail images and run through this process. And I really look forward to seeing what you produce.